In this video, the reality of this ground effect vehicle build begins to set in. My too lazy didn't plan strategy creates some backtracking and the fuselage starts to take shape. The plan for this build when completed is to have a one-of-a-kind boat-towed ground effect vehicle to skim the local waterways. The last video left off with the top cap strips being ironed in place. After that they received some epoxy and a lack of vacuum bagging caused some issues. The 3M77 uh, let go on some areas when the epoxy hit it in areas like that. Uh, that's really going to reduce your buckling strength. And here just released completely there's nothing on the other underside so that's what happens when you do not vacuum bag anything unwelcome but not unexpected result to improve the bottom cap strip process i simply oversized the fiberglass strip and epoxied only the upper portion leaving the rest to hold everything in place while curing and then i came back and removed the excess later i also used super glue to secure the fiberglass to the trailing edge not as good as a proper epoxy joint but better than nothing the strength of the D-Box was a source of concern for me, and I decided to try expanding foam to reinforce the outer bay only. You can see what the normal leading edge looks like, and you can see where the expanding foam went. We'll just think of these as like wingtip tanks on airplanes that actually make everything better. That's what I'm going to tell myself there. If you can see, that's pretty flimsy. I mean, I could punch right through it, but this... That's pretty solid, so... I think that will really help as long as the impact doesn't go past that section. Next up were the wingtips, which are nothing more than three foam ribs secured with Gorilla Glue. After a bit of shaping, I had something that looked decent but would need modification. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, so you can see this wingtip here. It's uh, rounded like a, yeah, kind of like a typical general aircraft airplane. Initially, I was thinking this would deflect off the water quite well if you get like a wing dip and it hits the water it would bounce off, but actually that's going to create a lot of drag and it's really going to dig into the water. I'm going to actually redesign this whole wing tip. You can see I just slapped on a flat panel. Compare that to this over here. Uh, this is much more of a planing wing tip rather than a displacement wing tip like I had before when it was all rounded and aerodynamic so that's the basic idea so i'm worried about wingtip strikes down here pushing the whole wing back and just collapsing this whole structure usually when i design a plane the spar will take everything um lateral you know, back and forth, up and down. But this one will only take up and down. To take impacts down there and transfer them to the fuselage, we have this piece of wood here, braced with this foam in here. With a bolt coming through here, I will secure this to the airplane or to the hull. A joiner box for each wing is necessary to carry the loads from the wing into the fuselage. Using the same size spruce caps as the wings, I glued them in place with foam supports and then wrapped them with bias cut fiberglass. Finally I wrapped the ends of the box with straight fiberglass and did an amazing poor man's vacuum bagging job, which is just released film wrapped in packing tape. Once the joiner box was cleaned up, it was time to start building the fuselage. 
The wing placement is critical, so I made some supports to hold everything in place at the correct angle of attack while the glue set. These would support the joiner box while the fuselage was constructed around it and could be removed later. Some relief cuts were made to the foam so that I could start giving the nose its shape. Then some side pieces were made and everything secured with glue. Cross braces in the fuselage to keep the wings from flexing independently of each other seemed like a good idea, so some foam was glued in place and then I went ahead and capped them with the fiberglass and epoxy using the lessons I had learned with the bagless wing cap stripping process. I need a way to attach the wings while keeping them removable, so next up I cut some carbon plates. Here is where we are at on the top of the uh, wing joiner install. You can see I staggered the two plates a little bit. Uh, that just helps create less of a stress riser right here where the carbon starts. So less likely to snap that if the uh, wing tip gets a lot of torque. I don't know, it's maybe not helpful, but it costs nothing. So why not do it? And then here's where, here's where the wing bolt's gonna go. And then I'm gonna cut off this portion right here. A little room was made at the bottom of each joiner box to accept the carbon joiner. It was at this point that I discovered a mistake. Okay, so I made a big goof. I've got the wing put in at the right angle of attack. And as you can see, the trailing edge of the wing is well below the step in the fuselage. So that would mean if I left it that way that the back end of the wing would be taking all of the planing force and I don't think it's going to be able to take that kind of force. I decided to add kind of like an angled slab here so that we make these flush or make the, the step even a little bit below it and then I'll knock the bottom out and so we don't have double the foam weight. But that's what a lack of planning does for you. In the next video I hope to finish up the build by covering the wings, wrapping the wing joiner section so it doesn't explode, making a tail and completing the fuselage. That's the plan anyways. See you next time.